Actions speak louder than words, and Dennis Gates' actions tell me he's pretty confident in this team in year two. Plus, on the football side, there appears to be a shakeup in the tight end room. So let's talk about that and more right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on college or just enter the promo code locked on college for a free white tech hat with any purchase. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you that. And here's what I'll promise you. Missouri's basketball schedule this season in year two of Dennis Gates is going to be a lot more difficult than it was in year one. Clearly, Dennis trying to set the foundation for his program last season. And, well, those of us who attended those November games saw a lot of blowouts. At least they were fun, though, right? It was just good to see fun basketball Missouri being on the right end of those blowouts number one but clearly year two is going to be much different and what that tells me is that Dennis Gates is ready to make the NCAA tournament once again I think he likes this roster quite a bit and again as I said in the cold open their actions speak louder than words and obviously Gates has a huge hand in this schedule and Missouri, just in the last few days here, has added a couple big-time high-major opponents in Minnesota and Seton Hall, already adding to a, what was already a pretty impressive non-conference schedule with teams including Memphis, Pittsburgh, Wichita State, and, of course, the Kansas Jayhawks and the Fighting Illini as well. So just a much different non-conference schedule this year. And I, I love it. Obviously, as a fan, it's going to be more entertaining than, listen, those blowouts the end of November, at a certain point, they got a little bit old, and we were ready to see Missouri play a real opponent. But obviously, Missouri's first real opponent was, unfortunately, the Kansas Jayhawks. And I say, unfortunately, obviously, because, well, for the second straight year against those hated Hawks, Missouri got beaten down pretty hard. So I'm guessing... Not only does Dennis Gates likes the, like this team, I think obviously he wants this team to be more prepared for that Kansas game, for the Illinois game, and for SEC play in general. I think, quite frankly, last year's schedule told me a little bit that that team was probably better than what even Dennis Gates expected. I think if you'd have asked him November 1st of last year, hey, is this team going to make the tournament? Are they going to make the round of 32? And you got to put your entire life savings on it. I, I don't think he would have taken that bet. So again, just to recap here, Missouri adding Minnesota and Seton Hall to the schedule. This season, Missouri will be playing at Minnesota the following year, or perhaps in future years, the, the Golden Gophers will travel to Columbia. Now the Seton Hall game is going to be in Kansas City this year. So the Tigers, interestingly, adding a game in KC on December 17th, presumably just before the Illinois game in St. Louis, which as of this point, I don't believe has a hard and fast date at the moment. So again, much harder schedule for the Tigers this season, but expectations are a lot higher this season as well coming into the season. So it all makes sense to me. And frankly, as a season ticket holder, I can't wait for it. And let's transition to football, of course, as we march toward the kickoff of this season, just about three weeks away here. And I'll tell you this, one spot I've been really looking toward is the tight end position this year. And I think we got some at least encouraging bits of information yesterday from Gerard Hamilton over at Power Mizzou. Actually, Gerard's written a couple times here in the last couple days about the tight end position. And it sure seems like 
Brett's or excuse me, Tyler Stevens has been passed on the depth chart. And frankly, Ryan Horstcamp too has probably been passed. At least that's the the word we're getting just based on Gerard's practice observations here. It looks like Max Wisner maybe leading the way for the for the first spot and first team there. Brett Norfleet is definitely in the mix as well. And also Jordan Harris, another guy that I haven't talked about very much on this show, except for when he actually committed to the Tigers, a guy with a big body, athletic body, an interesting guy to be in the mix at tight end there. So regardless, I just want to see some production. No matter who it is, Missouri has to. I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. The tight end position has to be a threat this year. At the very least, I'm not saying that anybody has to have 500 yards or eight touchdowns or anything like that. I'm not putting any statistical markers on it, but too often the last couple seasons, the tight end position has been a total afterthought, and it's actually shown in how defenses have been willing to defend Missouri. So at the very least, you got to respect that position and force defenses to respect the intermediate middle of the field. And coming up, I've talked a lot lately about the new Missouri State law set to take effect on August 28th here in about two and a half weeks. Well, gosh, there's a lot to get to on this, including why Missouri has been planning to move its name, image, and likeness operations in-house with the passing of this law. But some recent revelations, some recent moves by Texas A&M are throwing some cold water on this plan. Is this going to be what Missouri ultimately ends up doing? Well, again, there's a lot to break down here, and I want to do that on the other side of this break. But first, I want to tell you about FanDuel because football season, as you know, it's about to kick off, and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all the season long. Because right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl and you'll get bonus bets before every victory. So you want to take the Kansas City Chiefs to win the whole kit and caboodle? Well, how could I blame you whatsoever there? Obviously, I love myself some Chiefs. Their odds as we speak are 6-1, to one, so if they win it, you get paid out. But on top of it, every regular season win, you'll get bonus bets too. You can use those bonus bets on spreads player props, over-unders, and more. So just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. And every day is tomorrow on the show. Hopefully we're going to be talking about new Mizzou commit on the basketball side, Peyton Marshall. All indications are he's probably going to announce his intentions to sign with Missouri, but hey, no matter what happens, I'll have my analysis for you here tomorrow on the program. But right now, I want to talk a little bit more about name, image, and likeness and how it's going from Missouri's end. Obviously, as I've said before, everyone seems to very much realize now and agree that indeed this law that's coming into effect here on August 28th is a big boon for Missouri's recruiting efforts. But of course, all this is incredibly new as well. States, governments, the NCAA, how all of this is going to play out in the next few weeks, months, and years, who can frankly guess? And to that point, it sure looked like Missouri was reportedly going to be moving its name, image, and likeness operations in-house, if you will, under the umbrella of the actual athletic department and the university itself. And it seemed like Texas A&M was going that way, too, with its 12th man a foundation. But according to Dan Murphy here of ESPN, I'll just go ahead and read you directly from his X account update today on what it felt like July Brewing showdown between schools and Texas and the NCAA, the 12th Man Foundation, has decided to get rid of its NIL-specific fund for Texas A&M athletes due to concerns about keeping its nonprofit status with the IRS. And also, 
Christy Dosh, who covers NIL specifically and college sports for Forbes, says, I'm hearing most of the foundations who had been planning to bring name, image, and likeness in-house have changed their minds for the same reason. So if, if Miss Dosh here is correct, then it really looks like Missouri is going to be hitting the brakes there. And that's, frankly, that's a that's too bad. That would have been a really big advantage for Missouri once again because reportedly those donations in theory could have counted towards your Tiger Scholarship Fund the donation. So instead of, you know, these TSF donations going into, you know, the next waterfall in front of the indoor practice facility or, or what have you, then it could have directly gone to improving the product on the field, gone into the pockets of real players instead of these, you know, construction companies or whatever, continuing to line their pockets as the NCAA and SEC has done quite well over the decades. Well, again, just let this is all just something to keep our eyes on. I'm going to assume that Dan Murphy and Christy Dosh here have good information. But again, this is all very much brand new stuff. The ball is moving constantly. The target and the goalposts are moving constantly. I will just say, though, if Missouri as a state is willing to flout federal law in terms of cannabis, for instance, and by the way, Missouri is far from alone in that. I believe maybe even a majority of the states now in the union have some sort of cannabis legalization, whether it is medical or it's full-blown recreational now like we have in Missouri guess what? There's a lot of precedent for states, not just with cannabis, but immigration laws, various other different scenarios where they actually go against federal law. They actually say they nullify the federal law. And well, is Missouri willing to do that here? It's not as though there's a federal law being, being nullified here, but essentially the same idea of the SEC All of these institutions are essentially nullifying NCAA regulations and rules these days. So if the NCAA is not going to actually enforce the rules, just like if, for instance, the federal government's not going to stop the state of Missouri or anybody in it for setting up cannabis dispensaries, well, then essentially that law doesn't exist. That rule does not exist. Just like If you're on the interstates, like I have been in Kansas City, for instance, if it says 55 miles an hour and everybody's going 70, well, guess what? The real speed limit is 70 miles an hour. So again, let's just keep our eyes on all of this because this is definitely really important details. I'm just not sure how all of it's going to play out just yet. And the other day on the program, I brought up possibilities for the north end zone concourse at Memorial Stadium because, well, Desiree Reed Francois at least talked to somebody at the Columbia Daily Tribune, at least floating some possibilities out there. She said, quote, it can be much broader than just something that relates to football. This would be the anchor of an entertainment zone open 365, not just game days. So obviously this is a transformational idea here that Desiree Reed Francois has. And according to Gabe DeArmond, he says, quote, I know DRF has some very big ideas about the North Concourse and Hearn Center. Not sure on the possibilities or ho- how long they would take. One thing I know for sure, the Rock M is a permanent fixture on the Hill, no matter what else they might do. So again, I, I brought this up, I believe last week, but There are some good comments from a lot of Missouri fans on the thread here at Power Mizzou. I want to share some of these thoughts and add my own on the other side of this break because certainly this is a big topic for the future of Missouri sports. But first, I want to tell you about bird dogs because if you want to look good, we all want that north end zone concourse in theory. We want that to look good. Well, we want ourselves to look good. That's even more important. Well, bird dogs stretch Khaki shorts are designed to make you look good, to give you that truly sculpted look that fits slimmer through the thigh and the leg. Yes, the ladies love the calves. Be honest. You know you do. And here's the thing. Not only are they going to sculpt you, they're going to make you smell a little better too with some anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry 
all day long. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on college or enter the promo code locked on college for a free white tech hat with your order. Once again, that's birddogs.com slash locked on college or just enter the promo code locked on college at checkout for a free white tech hat. You won't want to take off your bird dogs. We promise you that. Now, my first question on the North Cons course, this whole this whole idea of, oh, we're going to have shops or Shakespeare's Pizza is going to open a new branch just north of Furrow Field, whatever it might be, whatever this 365, 24-7, you know, entertainment plaza, whatever you want to call it, I, I do think there is a question there that is obvious, which is, as I was sort of alluding to in, in an earlier segment on this here program, well, do we want to spend money on this? Or do we want to spend it on name, image, and likeness? In other words, buying better football players. Because as I was alluding to previously, again, wouldn't it be a better idea to spend the money on the actual guys on the field instead of these shiny new objects? Well, you would think so at first glance. But again, this is according to Gabe DeArmond, other people I've talked to with the athletic department. Apparently, the suites, the high-end suites, the new ones, that, despite the fact that new ones have obviously been built in recent years, not only in the south end zone, but on the west side, or excuse me, the east side of Memorial Stadium as well. Well, apparently those suites are all full and are not changing over. So there's no vacancy, more or less. If you're lucky, I guess maybe you could sneak in and, and get a suite at some point, but more, more or less, these babies are not changing hands. So there really is more demand for these suites than supply, it would seem. So at the very least, I think, yeah, definitely get some more suites on the north end. If there's demand for them, why the heck not? Now, I will say certainly I think a lot of people expect that north scoreboard, video board, all that stuff to be upgraded once again. I think the sound part needs to be upgraded too, simply with by putting speakers on the south end zone as well as the north end zone. I think that's going to make your overall sound mixing and quality be so much better. I know I'm, I'm the sound dork guy here, so maybe I'm getting a little bit too far into the weeds here, but it just seems to me on the south in, excuse me, on the north end zone currently, well, you have to turn up the volume to a point where it's sort of obnoxiously loud there in order for people in the south end where I sit to be able to hear the announcements and everything. So again, just put some speakers on the south end. I think that's money well spent. But again, why do I need a suite, by the way? If it's if it's really 365 all year round for these shops and stuff, well, can I can I take a nap in my suite? 365 of not on a game day. Do I have to only have six home games a year where I can hang out in my suite? Or can I have a bachelor party there? Something like that. Hey, maybe there's an idea. But some more ideas from online from some anonymous power Mizzou message board people. So guess what? Since they're anonymous there, I'm not going to shout out their handles. But one poster said, I just wish we would have closed off the stadium like every awesome school in the SEC. DRF does seem to notice these things, whereas in the past, it seems like we just accept it. Now, I have to be honest, I'm not sure what that person totally meant there. Do they mean closing off the stadium itself, or do they mean closing off Stadium Boulevard so cars can't come through and people can walk? I don't really know what that necessarily adds, so I'll assume he means the stadium itself there. And honestly, I like the open air aspect of Memorial Stadium. Sure, make a bigger video board, have some have some different stuff back there in the north end zone. But I think, you know, actually closing in the stadium itself, that seems like way too much work, number one. Another poster says, all I want is a restaurant with a view of the field. Every single date night and birthday dinner would be there for the rest of my life. Okay, now we're talking. Now we're actually talking about something. I do remember actually staying up in one of those dorms that are just north of the stadium there during, you know, Norm Stewart camp back in the day, you're up on the top floor. It was pretty cool to be able to see down the stadium. So I'll agree with that. That could definitely be a classy 
move for sure, especially if it's part of the stadium itself. Hey, you could sell some premium seats in there for football and have it be a 24-7, 365 you know, type restaurant for the rest of the year. But again, that's where my priorities would be. Sound, video board. Hey, you want to put some shops in, all that stuff. That's great. But clearly, there is demand for more suites. And so Missouri does seem to need to add more supply. As for the non-premium seats, the actual, you know, bleacher type seats, that type of thing, your regular seating, of which I'm a part, most of you are listening to the show are a part. Well, I don't think there is really as much of a demand for that, at least not at this point. If anything, I'd like to see there be more demand, much more demand built up by the football program itself before the Tigers actually even start considering expanding their their actual capacity, their non-premium capacity. I just don't see the demand for it at this point. Let's start filling up the stadium with absolute regularity before we even think about that. Let's make Furrow Field a real event, a real fun place to be, and a part of that is actually filling up the stands with the 61,000 or whatever you have right now. So, you know what? Thanks, as always, for for joining me here on Locked on Mizzou. If you have any thoughts on what you'd like to hypothetically see in this north end zone development, hey, let me know. I'd love to hear from you anywhere on social media at Locked on Mizzou or Locked on Mizzou at gmail.com. So, thanks for listening. As always, I'll see you tomorrow. For you everydayers, hopefully a happy bit of news with Peyton Marshall right here on Locked on Mizzou.